Welcome to the man cave on this lovely Sunday. Ta-da! I could not wait till Monday to start this video. I was down the workshop today waiting for someone. So, um, looky, looky. I don't know whether you can see what's in the trailer of that John Deere, but let's get on my benches here and get this stuff put on. And we'll show you exactly what we've got. We have one cutter deck. <clears throat> one pair of rear wheels. One pair of front wheels. One bonnet, one pair of handlebars, <coughs> one engine base plate and gearbox. Hmm. One box of small parts. One chassis. To show you literally how big this thing is. And to go on the back here, one engine, which goes on my little stand, and this miscellaneous bit of tin, which I think must have come off this mower, of course, it was all with it. So yeah, that's what we've got. Um, now, I can't remember how this thing go back together, I'll be perfectly honest. I took it to bits 12, 13 years ago, and I honestly, I'm unsure how this goes back together. I really am. So, I think the best thing to do, if I remember rightly, this brake, push the lever and the little shoes come out, look. You can see that, Mr. Cameraman? I don't know why I'm saying that, because myself. There you go, look. I expand your brake shoes. Now, if I remember rightly, built on this sprocket, there's a welded drum. So I think that somehow, I think with a shaft cleaned up, this goes over into there. I don't know how you guys would go about doing this, but I think what I really need to do is give this a sort of dry fit. Um, roughly assemble it to make sure number one, everything's there, and number two, that so I've got a rough idea of exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, now I don't in, look at these tiny little belts. Everything on this mower are small. I don't intend making this a functioning lawnmower again. Um, number one, the blade is gone. Although that wouldn't be a job to get a blade for it. But to be honest with you, I'm never, ever, ever going to use this thing to cut grass. Um, yes, I'll put the cutter deck back on it. I will reassemble all the blade bosses. But as for connecting up all the menagerie to run the belt... For the cutter deck i doubt it if i can easily fathom it out maybe but if i can't then i won't i shall have to just work something out is that throttle cable free well look at that that throttle cable after all these years that throttle cable is still free 
Would you credit it? Now, yeah, it's been sitting in that bucket for years. Obviously got water in it at some point because I started to rust. Yeah, that throttle cable is still free. I'm going to keep as much of this original as I can. There's our drive chain. Which I think if you soak that in oil, that'll come good again. Right, I've left a bolt in there, that's good of me. Oh, that come in three. Oh, I think that was to adjust the cutting height. I think you took these spacers out to raise or lower your blade. Think. <clears throat> it's starting to come back to me now. Can't believe this solid brass piece that's been machined out of a solid bit of brass. Unbelievable. Same with this pulley, look. All been machined out of brass. That lovely. Now, am I or am I not missing some brackets? I found a gear knob. I found a linkage. I found the throttle control, which I think will unfree. Yeah, that'll unfree. There's that little plate we were looking at. Several nuts and bolts. Now, I thought there was meant to be a bracket go on there to house the axle. I think that bit's on probably missing. Which is good. I like being missing parts. There's a spacer. Oh, that don't go over there. Right. Basically, where the heck do you start? Well, I shan't be needing these brass parts for the minute. And I shan't be needing the blade parts. But from memory, I think there was two brackets which bolted on here. Which held your axle. Or somehow, oh dear, somehow this goes in here. Yeah, somehow that goes in there. I might have to have a dig around for said brackets. But I did find off camera the other day, I said I thought there was two chrome side panels. I found them. Stainless steel side panels, which go on the side of the bonnet, your exhaust come out there, that slides over your exhaust. And this one goes on the drinker side. So, I think we have all the parts, apart from maybe these brackets, which I, they must be there somewhere. Um, the rest of them are was in there, so... I would say they was in there somewhere. So let me organise these bits a little bit and then we're going to give this a dry fit and see if we can get it sort of half resembling what it's meant to be. And then I can see exactly what's going on. I'll be back in a minute. Right. We're going to start with our chassis. Start with the chassis. Our wheels come something like this. Same with this side. Our front wheels come something like so. Ah, my bit of wood's not long enough to hold it, look. Come on. <clears throat> I really ought to have a bit of wood to cover this whole thing. I have this cut out there so you can hang things off the end. But sometimes that can be a pain in the bum. 
So to make things don't go rocking and rolling away, we'll put two bits of wood under. There we go. So that's basically that. Uh, somehow this went on here. I don't quite know how. Um, I think you pedal come out underneath and that, that, went, that went on. Ah, right, all the holes are lining up. Look, there's all these holes are lining up. So that must go there. <clears throat> now, which way did this cutter deck go on? That bit of wood ain't really doing a lot. Somehow this cutter deck went under here. Like so. And these are your feet rest. That's where you put your feet. I remember that. I remember you put your feet there. So that went there, that went there. Where's this? Ah, there's a little cut out there where that clutch pedal go. Right, we found it. We found a little cut out where the clutch went. Yeah, that's basically where the clutch went to. Our engine uh, somehow goes on here. Uh, I seem to be missing the pulley off the bottom of the engine, but I'm guessing I can probably source one from somewhere. Uh, the bonnet went. Uh, Somehow on there. Your handlebars. Your handlebars went somewhere there. I think this engine needs to come further back. There we go. This is basically how this thing goes back together. So that's what it looks like. She's a once seen, never forgotten. And like I say, there used to be an old school tractor seat go on there. But I'm pretty sure that got thrown away years ago because it was extremely rough and pretty much past saving. Plus it wasn't very ornate. But that's roughly how it goes back together. Roughly. There we go. Um, so we've got a dry fit. Just so you can see what this thing is like. Uh, there seem to be other brackets somewhere and I don't... That's right, and these chrome panels... They come somewhere on here. Which way up did they go? Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, right, there's two screw holes. There are screw holes here and here, so yeah, it comes, and these chrome panels come somewhere on there, like so. Come on, stay there for a second. That'll do. And one the other side. And that's basically what the little machine looks like. So she's a little beast. 
And now I know the, the plastic cover is around the back, what covers up the chain and sprocket. I've got this axle the wrong way, look, because the gearbox, gearbox is this side, so the sprocket got to be over this side. But I just wanted to give it a dry run so you guys can see exactly what this thing is. And if you're wondering how long it is, because you ain't got much scale, let's get the old tape measure out. From one end to the other, 45 inches. Yes, yeah, 45 inches, or in new money, 115 centimetres. <clears throat> so there you go, just over a metre long, 40, 45 inches. <sighs> there you have it, that's what, that's what the size and how low it is. You, you won't believe how low this damn thing is, I mean... Your ground clearance when you'd be cutting grass with it would be horrific. I mean, the height of it is 15 inches, look. From the floor to the top of the recoil, 15 inch. So that is how small our little unique tractor, mower, whatever you want to call it. That's how tall it is. I am quite concerned that I don't have these brackets what hold on this back axle. So I can't remember how they, how they used to look. Years ago, I used to have pictures of when I first bought this in its original state. I had about 30 pictures because I kept them as reference. But unfortunately, when I moved out of my old house, them computers were, them computers, them photos were actually on my old um, desktop computer and I had a bad breakup from my ex and when I moved out the computer pretty much well I hadn't used that computer for years because I'd moved on to a laptop and I never got that computer back so sadly all the pictures I had of this originally when I got it have gone um, I know she since scrapped the laptop years ago so Unfortunately, yeah, the pictures I had of it originally are gone, which I'm gutted about, absolutely gutted. Because I just wish I had some, mainly for reference and number two, so you guys could see what this thing was like when I got it. It was all assembled, but covered in surface rust, and not a lot of the original paint was left. So, yeah, this is what we're up against, I'm afraid. We've got to get this thing back together. Believe me, that looked quite a doody machine. When I see it on that auction, I thought, I love this thing. That's absolutely fantastic. Why is that cut out in there? Because I don't go over that exhaust. Look. Unless I so you can get to this carb or something. I haven't got a clue why that cut out was in there, but they obviously put it in there for a reason. Right, I think first thing I'm going to do is get this engine on the engine stand at the back there and get some oil down the plug hole and basically see if I've got a spark on the damn thing. And then once we've got a spark on the engine, I can reassemble the engine and maybe get some paint on it. I know the wheels were white, the engine was white, everything else was orange and the seat was black and the handlebars, they were silver. So I can remember what colours it was vividly. So yeah, it's going to go orange, which was like a RAC orange. But if you guys wait there a second, and let me just jam through the back here, in my paint room, look what I found. From when I painted, if you go further back in my videos, I painted a 1970s Mobilette scooter in, ta-da, Mobilette orange. And I have good half a litre of Mobilette orange left, which if I put a good coat of white 2K primer over that, this should do that job. Of course, a space that's only small. So I'm going to get this engine on this pallet at the back here, which I use. And then we're going to see if we can get a spark out of this thing. 
Right. What we're going to do, we need to get this plug out. How tight is everything? Oh! There you go. Old plug's had some hard. <laughs> she's had some hard, mate. I think she's bugging. We want to get this top cover off, and I just want to give everything a little blowout and a little oil up. Oh, they're not 10 mil, whatever size are they? They look like 11, which is unusual. They're 11, look. There's a fuel tank missing off here as well, but that's a standard Tecumesh tank. <clears throat> Come on. And I'm pretty sure I've got standard Tecumesh mesh tank somewhere, so I can find one of them. I did think, for ease, now you guys are not going to like this, <laughs> but I did think of putting a three and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton on it, because they're virtually the same footprint and the same physical size as this. And I know I can get them Briggs and Stratton three and a half horsepowers. I can get them so reliable that three squirts and they go first pull. These are always a bit more temperamental because they've got separate chokes and business. But I know you guys are going to say, oh no, you can't put a Briggs and Stratton on that. It must have that original Tecumseh. So if we can, we'll keep this original Tecumseh. Come on. There's some really weird sizes on here because that's not 12 and I think 13 is going to be too sloppy. These must be some... Oh, bugger! Come on, girl! <clears throat> they are tight. Oh. Yeah, they are extremely tight. If you wonder why I'm using a quarter drive on these and not... Oh, they're head bolts, that's why. If you wonder why I'm using a three-quarter drive on these and not three-eighths, with a three-eight or half-inch drive on something this small, it's so much more likely to ring a bolt off. With quarter drive, it's not so easy to ring them off. You can feel better if they're too tight. So if I can't really undo them with a quarter, I might try them with a 3.8, but a lot of the time I'll then heat them. Mm, surprisingly nice under there. Surprisingly nice. All right. I'm wondering now I can hear oil gurgling out here so do you know I think for the time being there's a kill wire there we need to leave that out from under that cover I think for now I'm going to just oil this recoil back up Although it works and goes back in surprisingly well, actually, it wouldn't hurt from a little bit of lubrication. So let me get some oil and we'll get back to it. Right, we have our duck oil and I've got a sparker. I've got a new sparker later, so let's get some duck oil in this mechanism here. Let that soak into that recoil a bit. Squirt a bit down that plug hole. Alright, I think. I think that's... I bet this hasn't got a spark after all these years, so I'm going to have to pull that flywheel and clean the points. I think this has got points on it still. 
that points are, you know, they're working right there, quite reliable. So I'm just going to put these bolts back in. I'm going to have to look up the engine number on this and see if I can date this engine. I know all the Briggs & Stratton had a data off the um, serial and code number. I can date them at the precise day they were built, but to Cumsy, I'm not so sure. Not so sure how you do that. Where's our plug wire? Ah, there it is. Make sure that ain't got under the cover. They sent the final assembly because um, I've got to do a bit more cleaning out and blowing out before I go anywhere near spraying this thing, getting it painted up again. Come on. Right, that's back together enough just to Oh, okay. We've got the old bit of spark plug on here. Cool. Ah, oh, right, okay. Well, we don't need that. So let's get this plug wire nipped on here. Oh, I very much doubt we're going to have anything. Make sure that kill wire is not grounded. No, oh, that's out of the way now. Now, I think if I put that on there with a bit of weight on it, there you go. Let's get you zoomed in on that plug. Da -da -da, where's that plug? There it is. Where are we, Mr. Cameraman? <clears throat> Let's get you guys lowered down a little. Yeah, get you a bit closer to the action. Well, there's our spark plug. If I grab a hold of this, are we getting a spark? Nothing at all. No spark whatsoever. So it'll look like I am going to have to pull the flywheel on this thing. And see if we can get some sort of spark from there. But I'll probably do that in another video. I'll probably call this video about it now, because that's going to be sort of 20 minutes long, and I don't want to bore you guys too much with doing the same thing. Um, I admit this is not very exciting, but this is part one of the, I don't know what we're going to call this little thing, the Halston mower? Don't know, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I'm going to have to pull the flywheel off, clean the points and see if I can get some sort of spark back on this thing. Right, well, I'm going to end it there and I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>